If you guys haven't noticed, like side note, my fingernails are all jacked up. I put on fake nails a couple days ago and yeah, they've just been falling off. And I also like, they bug me. Like I have them on, I can only stand them for a day before I start like picking at them and like gnawing them off. And like, it's just satisfying to take them back off once you put them on. <laughs> everyone welcome back to my channel so today I'm gonna to be doing a video on all the favorite books that I read from 2019 I just recently went back through my Goodreads and I checked and you know what's funny is I saw a lot of books or a fair number that I gave four and five stars that I thought I would include my favorites because I remember enjoying those but then I had a hard time remembering what they were about so I chose not to include those. So if you do follow me on Goodreads and you're wondering why I didn't include some five stars, I might change the ratings on those simply because I don't remember what they're about. Uh, and I wanna, I feel like if a book is my favorite of the whole year or one of my favorites of the whole year, then it's memorable. And that's part of what makes a book a favorite. And sometimes a book is a favorite in the moment, but then I actually can't remember it that well when I go to make a video or think about it later or recommend it. A lot of these books I don't own that are my favorite, so I'm gonna be showing them to you via the iPad because it really bothers me not to be able to hold something up. But I'm just gonna get into this list here and share with you my favorite reads of 2019. Now the first one is Wonder by RJ Palacio. And this is gonna be an iPad hold up I can't believe we don't own this book. I think we just, we've constantly checked it out from the library because my kids continue to read it. But I wanted to start off with this one because it's a read aloud that I did with my kids very early in the year. Uh, we read it all together. And usually when I'm reading aloud to my kids, sometimes it's actually harder for me to get into a story if I'm reading it out loud. Uh, I actually am not absorbing sometimes the information or I'm thinking about other things while I'm reading a book. Um, but this was one that that did not happen. I absolutely loved Wonder. Uh, this is about a boy who has a deformity, a facial deformity, and he's been homeschooled all of his life, and he finally decides to go to public school. And there, you know, some struggles happen because of the way he looks, and and you're hearing from him and his perspective and about how he he feels really normal but he realizes his face is just shocking for other people um and then his struggles with uh bullying and just you know dealing with those reactions even though like he just wants to be you know treated like a regular kid uh and he wants people just to get to know him and you get to you really get to know him through the story as well and see what a cool kid he is my kids one of the reasons i rate this so high is one because it's very memorable very sweet i actually got emotional about it which i don't all i don't really get that emotional or invested like i said before in like middle grade stories and below but this one i did we ended up watching the movie my daughter choked up and teared up for the first time ever watching a movie so it's a pretty like hard hitting book. Um, so that's why this made the list. Now the next one I thought that I owned, but I couldn't find it, but it's Rage Becomes Her by Soraya Chimley. Pretty sure that's how I pronounce her name. Um, I really enjoyed this book. I was going through a period early in the year um, where I was really struggling with um, anger and my guilt for feeling anger and and what you know what even that means and then being angry because I felt guilty oh I forgot to hold it up when I mentioned it but this is the cover rage becomes her the power of women's anger and what this is is basically a collection of essays of women and basically like um them being angry over different scenarios and it's just like it's like an examination of women's anger basically through a collection of essays um, maybe why some, some women are, women are so angry and why, um, I remember one of the important things because I did read it so early on in the year, but it did stick with me as one of my favorites. One of the things that stuck out to me was also the way that anger can be expressed because it's not always like this ragey anger. The collection of essays in this book, uh, and the examination of them really kind of 
I don't know, examine how women's anger isn't always expressed traditionally or how we think of anger, like with yelling or raging um, and why maybe that isn't so. Why, why a lot of women feel like they can't express anger in a traditional way or why um, it comes out in more insidious ways um, and why maybe women's anger is more unacceptable or more abrasive to, uh, I'm gonna use American culture as an example because that's the one I'm part of and I'm not familiar with, I'm not, don't have any practical experience outside of my own, um, but why specifically in American culture, why women's anger, uh, I don't know, it's just less acceptable than men's anger. When men are angry, they're powerful. Um, or a lot of times they're perceived to be powerful. It's it's really acceptable to see a man that's angry, but when a woman is angry, she's a bitch. She's a harpy. She's shrill. She's screeching. Um, she doesn't. She's not powerful. She's insane. Uh, so that's something I really appreciated, especially as I mean, as a woman who has experienced those words being um, told to me whenever I feel angry, that like rang true for me, and I really enjoyed. Um, reading these different stories on uh, women who've been angry for various reasons. Now the next book that I read that was a favorite this year was American Prison by Shane Bauer and it says a reporter's undercover journey into the business of punishment. This is another one I read early on in the year. I think when I wrote these down for my Goodreads I started like way at the at the bottom um, in the order that I read them. So all these are like way in the in the early part of the year and I could have swore I own this one but I could not find it on my shelves anywhere and it's bugging me um, because I specifically bought it after I read this because I enjoyed it so much. But this one is American Prison by Shane Bauer and I like this one. This is a nonfiction book which I don't think I forgot to mention that Rage Becomes Her is nonfiction as well. But this is a nonfiction book and it's basically kind of like a history of the American prison and um, how it's gotten worse versus better. Like how uh, as our country has evolved, our prison system um, instead of improving upon itself has gotten worse. It really makes you question the way things are set up the way they are now and kind of like how the system is set up to fail um, people and society. And the whole for-profit system, um, I did not know a lot of things that I know now because of this book. Um, admittedly, like a lot of nonfiction, even if it covers really good content, um, it doesn't always you know, keep your attention. But this one did. This was a very compelling read. I really enjoyed re reading it. And it's one of those that like... I learned so much. I realized as I was reading it how much I didn't know and it kind of makes you question everything that you thought you knew. I mean, and if you didn't know about American prisons, it kind of makes you question everything that you thought you knew about them. So I really appreciate that because I learned so much from this book. Now I finally have some books to hold up. Uh, the next book that I really enjoyed this year and loved so much is another nonfiction, and that was The Brave Learner by Julie Bogart. And it says, Finding Everyday Magic and Homeschool Learning in Life. And I devoured this book when it came out. I, I actually pre ordered this book. Um, so I, I got it like the day that it came out. It showed up in my mail, and it was so exciting because I've never done that before um, for myself. I so love this book. If you guys aren't familiar with Julie Bogart, this is her picture on the back. Maybe her picture will jog some memories, but she um, has created that curriculum. What is it called? Oh, the Brave Writer Program, which we don't really, we don't actually use, but it's a pretty big uh, writing and language arts curriculum in the homeschool world uh, for good reason, because it's really innovative and creative and really, I think, from what I've heard from people that use it and as someone that has like flip through it, that it really helps inspire your children to love to write. Cause that's the whole point for a curriculum, not to really delve too much into the mechanics of it, but to just really love it. And this whole book is about basically her whole homeschool philosophy beyond her writing curriculum. Um, basically how she did things, um, the importance of games and connection over academics. And really, the big takeaway that I got from this book was just to feel completely inspired 
This book is so inspiring. It really brings you comfort as a homeschool parent if you do homeschool. Um, and maybe, I mean, even if you don't, because it just covers a lot of family dynamic in here that is really important to take away and how you really can like take a breath, step back, trust the process more than your checklist. Don't focus on the checklist. Focus on your kids is the big takeaway I got from this book. And I just love it so much. And I think, I don't know, I might reread it this year because I need, I'm in constant need of inspiration as a homeschool mom. Ooh, the next book that I read that was a huge favorite this year was Moxie by Jennifer Matthew. This is a YA book and I think I got it, I got it in a family reading crate, um, which I don't know if those are coming back or not this year. I need to check in on that because I know there was a hiatus, but I don't know if they're gonna be back or something new in 2020. Um, I'll look into that and link it below if I can find some information. But this was one I got in a family reading crate. This is a YA. Oh my gosh, guys, I love this book. This is about a teen girl who is in a high school that um, is really immersed in toxic masculine jock culture. The A lot of the guys in her school that are the jocks, they're part of the football team or the basketball team, uh, the really popular guys, they get away with so much crap that they can pull in school and and treat the girls especially in their school is basically uh sides of meat you know like girls are being scored on their looks uh inappropriate comments are being made and the teachers do nothing because these are their star sports players and this girl what I love about her, she's not your typical loudly outspoken um, girl. She's not someone that you think is going to fight back. So what this being, so what this character does is she decides to fight back completely unexpectedly, and no one can guess that it's her. Uh, she makes a feminist zine and anonymously distributes it throughout her school, just basically outlining. Um, why she's fed up, are you guys fed up too, let's meet together. And so this whole club is formed with no leader, even though she's behind it. And they decide collectively they're going to fight back against their toxic school culture um, and just the unfair rules about girls' dress codes and the jocks getting away with stuff. And it's just an awesome book. What I loved most about this was it made me feel energetic. I felt pumped after reading this. I mean, I, I was like fist bumping in the air. Um, I have a distinct memory of doing that in the kitchen while my husband was cooking and I was reading and I was just going, yeah. And uh, yeah, he was just giving me weird looks, but. Okay, I don't know why I can't find a proper cover of this next book on Amazon because I'm just pulling up my Amazon to show you guys covers. My next favorite book that I read this year was Dry by Neil Schusterman. And I'm pretty sure this was a, a YA book as well. And I realize now I pulled up the French version of, of the audio book on here. But that's what the cover looks like. Um, this was a crazy book. It's a YA dystopian about a future United States of America. And there is a water shortage that happens out west. And all of a sudden, water basically disappears. It's no longer coming from the tap. It's not coming from the hose. Um, the reservoirs have dried up. And there are teenagers who are basically facing this scenario in which society crumbles out west very quickly when the water goes gone. Um, and I really enjoyed it. This book gave me so much anxiety. I remember reading it super fast and just feeling so anxious. Uh, I think it it's kind of reminiscent of like, um, it reminded me of like zombie movies, like The Walking Dead. Um, not that there were any zombies, but people turned into uh, these water famished zombies, basically, who are revolting against each other. Um, and a lot of violence starts breaking out because there's no water and you really like get this, you, it really hits home how valuable water is. And, um, the fact that, I mean, we're not going to hold on to our civility for very long if we start losing a very important essential resource to life. 
Um, yeah, it takes less than 24 hours for society to just collapse, basically. And I really enjoyed this book. Um, again, it gave me so much anxiety. So if you want to feel anxious and nervous, and um, I think one of the reasons that made me feel that way is because this is a scenario that could happen versus like zombies or vampires or or something really fantastical. Um, this is something that could potentially happen in your own life uh, one day. And that's why it made me feel so uneasy. The next book that I read that was a favorite, and I'm realizing now that I read quite a bit of nonfiction that ended up being favorites this year. Uh, I don't think I talked about this one in any other video, but I read Folks, This Ain't Normal by Joel Salatin. I read this back in the spring when I was feeling really inspired. Um, springtime around here is just a, a really inspiring time, probably for a lot of people. Uh, but baby goats are being born. Uh, I got chickens or picking up on laying eggs. And I read this actually with a neighbor and good friend of mine. Um, and this is about Joel, who if you aren't familiar with uh, the homestead community or farming community. He is a permaculture farmer that resides in, I think, it's either Virginia or West Virginia. I'm pretty sure it's Virginia. But he's sort of like just examining and sort of attacking the whole food system that we have here um, and the importance of rotational grazing and farming and sustainable farming, why you can make your meat and things more nutrient dense by treating your animals correctly and rotating them and getting giving them that sunshine, that freedom, that grass. Uh, this is very specific to me in my interest, but I did want to include this. Um, it's one of the reasons why I didn't talk about this because I didn't know how many people would want to hear about um, permaculture farming, but. I really enjoyed this book and if you are in any way interested in homesteading or farming I would highly recommend folks this ain't normal or anything by Joel Salatin uh, I definitely don't agree with him on everything and he has a very like loud personality that comes through in the book and in all of his books really um, and we definitely don't agree on some things but it, that doesn't matter um, when there's certain topics that you know someone knows know stuff about and they're good at it like it, it doesn't matter that um you agree with them disagree with them on a lot of other things moving right along another favorite book that i read this year was one i picked up from the library so i don't have it but it is lighter than my shadow by katie green and this was actually a graphic novel and i think it was the first graphic novel that i've read in, in years uh previously like when I was younger, I would always grab those Archie comics that are at grocery store checkout lines and beg for them. And I amassed like a whole collection of those. I loved reading Archie comics when I was younger. But that was pretty much the extent of my reading of graphic novel or comic type books until this year, basically, because I thought it was something I just wasn't into. But this basically reintroduced me to them and made me seek out even more. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I've kind of like picked up on my reading a little bit of graphic novels, but I read Lighter Than My Shadow, and this is about a teen girl who is struggling with an eating disorder. This is really dark and very atmospheric and just very, um, yeah, very hard hitting and a little like emotional to read. And she's also dealing with like abuse and like it kind of like gets into this mental spiral of how an eating disorder works because personally I've never had an eating disorder I've never it's something I've never struggled with and I know it's very common but for those of us who haven't struggled with it it's just hard to understand something obviously that you've never experienced and I like that this was done in graphic novel form to kind of see her mental Viral and her struggle and the way that her thoughts are con constantly turning in on themselves and churning and um, just creating this whole, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, like this maze of confusion, basically, overeating. And then there's also some abuse in here and there's just, it was an incredibly good graphic novel and I really enjoyed it. And I would recommend it to anyone whether you read graphic novels or not. I didn't prior to this read them anymore and now I'm seeking out ones that are similar to this. The next book that stands out in my mind is so memorable and so lovely from this year 
was The Fire by Night by Teresa Messineo. And this is a historical fiction uh, based in World War II. And what is great about this is there's so many World War II books out there, but this is about two nurses during World War II. And it focuses on their stories um, and what's going on in their lives during the war. One ends up being a POW and then, or do they both? No, one ends up being a POW. I can't remember now what happens to the other one. I just remember I read this really quickly and I loved it and like it was heart wrenching. Um, of course it's war based so there's a lot of death in here. Um, but it flips back and forth between their perspectives because they were really good friends, almost like considered themselves sisters. And you hear from both of them throughout this book and they both have pretty distinct character voices, which I really enjoyed. But I think one ends up being a POW in a Japanese camp and I'm just like, reading really quick to to remind myself really quickly what this is about oh and there's love involved uh another one falls in love with one of the soldiers that she's taking care of um it's just it's so good i love this book so much it was so well written and it was a great story and it's been a while since i've read um read a historical fiction about any war but definitely about world war ii now another big favorite this year was no exit by Taylor Adams. I'm wondering now if this is gonna show up. I can't remember if this shows up um, flipped where you can even like read the words properly. I'm sorry if it does. I just am desperate to hold stuff up. But this was another favorite this year that I absolutely loved. This book is a thriller um, that takes place uh, during a really cold winter's night and uh, snow was falling heavily and the main character basically gets stranded at this rest stop with a bunch of other strangers. And she's trying to make a phone call. She's trying to let the people who are waiting on her um, that she's gonna be late, uh, that she's snowed in. And as she's walking through the parking lot, she sees uh, one of the cars in the parking lot or a van and she sees in the back some movement and when she looks through the window she sees a girl in a cage in the back of the van and she realizes it's one of these people that she's snowed in with at this rest stop one of these strangers is crazy <laughs> and has kidnapped a young girl and put her in the van and she's trapped with them she's snowed in with them this was such a ride of a book for me. Uh, there's something that happens early on in the book and I've said this several times in other videos there's something that happens early on in the book uh, where a big info bomb is dropped that I did not see coming and literally my stomach felt like it hit the floor when I was reading this. I was standing when I was reading this book at one point and I just felt like my stomach just hit the floor and uh, I had to close the book and take a step back and just absorb the information that I just got. It was crazy. And I loved it. It was very memorable for me. So I recommend that. And it's one of my favorites. Obviously it made it into the video. I think I've talked about this book recently in a video, but another like favorite that stands out in my mind that I think I'm going to remember forever because the thing about favorites as you get towards the end of the year, they're all really fresh. Um, I think I picked this basically because I thought it would hold up. I would remember this for years to come. But that is Lessons from a Dead Girl by Joel Knowles. And I read this from the library. And I know I talked about it in a previous video. But this was a fantastic book. Uh, it was a YAA book about a girl who was basically dealing with a frenemy situation. And um, her friend died. But she's not upset about it. And that's kind of where the book begins. And then it goes back in time and starts at the beginning of their friendship when they met as young girls and uh, how their friendship developed and all the toxic traits and stuff that went with that and how you can be abused and bullied by also your best friend and how her parents, <laughs> her parents had no idea that this kind of stuff was going on. And it sort of scared me a little bit as a parent. And thinking back, like I, I can remember having a few friendships that were similar to this not quite as intense or as bad. Um, and how to the outside world, I mean, no one would know that you're dealing with these mixed emotions because this is your best friend, but they also are the person who is hurting you the most. And I just really liked uh, 
that exploration of really toxic best friend relationships because I don't I don't think that's covered enough in books or in anything really. Next book is a recent read as well and that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Again, another one that I've talked about recently and this one I included because one, I loved it obviously um, when I was reading it but also because it surprised me. Um, this is one that I picked up solely because of booktube uh, because it's been so popular and everyone's been talking about it and it's not one that I would typically pick up because I would think just reading the synopsis that I wouldn't really care about the story going on in here, but I ended up loving it. This is about a famous actress, a famous old actress, and it follows um, her story. It's basically like a biography of a fictional actress and her story and how she... Uh, has lived her life and why she's ended up with seven husbands and her reasons behind doing things. And I think what people like about this, including myself, is that celebrities are really easy to hate. And this kind of gets into um, the things that you don't see. I mean, I know this is a fictional actress, but it still gets into the things you don't see behind the scenes and why seemingly these famous people were making these really crazy decisions. But um, the reasons why, and then you be, I don't know, you just become more sympathetic and understanding of the unique position that they are, that she is in and why she would seemingly make like these crazy decisions to divorce someone. She just got married and get married to this person, um, and everything, uh, like why she would do certain things to advance her career. Um, wow, you can see reflections really badly in this. Uh, I just really loved it again because it surprised me um, and it was really well written and I just I love the story. Now the very last book that is a favorite that I read this year is one I actually got for Christmas and I had to include it um, and that is The Handmaid's Tale by uh, Margaret Atwood. I was looking at this at the bottom I was like wait that's not the author. Um, this is the graphic novel version of the book. I read the actual book several years ago and then my husband got this for me for Christmas and I read it in one day. I mean, I just devoured this. But I wanted to include this because The Handmaid's Tale is a favorite book of mine and then reading it in graphic novel form was just awesome. I loved it. I love when old like favorite books are turned into graphic novels if they're done well um, because in a lot of ways, they can invoke even more emotion, at least for me, to see your characters uh, have a face put to them and stuff. I don't know. I just, I just loved it. And the artwork in here is stunning. It is absolutely stunning. Who, who did this? Renee Nault is the art illustrator for this graphic novel. And oh, first of all, I love all the red in this. I can't rave about this enough. I just... beautiful book. Um, I don't think I need to synopsize. Is that a word? Uh, the Handmaid's Tale, but this is basically like a future America where fertility has gone way down and this group of basically like religious terrorists have corrupted or taken over the American government and um, basically changed the way the whole country works and has imprisoned women and the handmaid's tales about the handmaids specifically who are fertile but they're also women who have done bad things like they've been divorced or they're gender traitors because they were lesbians or bisexual but if they if if it was proven that they were fertile in their years previous to this whole corruption of the government or takeover of the government then they are then used basically as broodmares um, because the fertility rate has gone down so much that a woman that can reproduce is extremely valuable and they're raped and imprisoned and it's just a crazy story concept and to see it in graphic form is just even more it's just even more intense but those were all my favorite books from 2019 
Uh, I don't think I forgot any here. Uh, these were the ones that, again, as I was going through my Goodreads list, they just stood out in my mind. Um, these aren't all my five street, five star reads, but these are the ones that I remember the most and I can look back on and, and they come to my mind quite often and I think about them. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Uh, let me know some of your favorites that you read this year and what are you looking forward to read in 2020? I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching and I'll see you all again hopefully really soon.